Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby with Fitness is Medicine. And I've got a gym full here today. I've got a lot of helpers, but it's nap time. So hopefully they'll be relaxed. Um, anyway, so we're gonna get working today. I'm gonna do an exercise program using a medicine ball. Now this isn't a very heavy one. Um, depending on what you have around your house, we can you can use different things. You can either use a jug of water, um, like I've used in the past, you could use a dumbbell for most of these. If you don't have a medicine ball, that's fine. Or if you have a really heavy one or a really light one, you can use pretty much anything for it. But if you do have a medicine ball at home, let's give it out and let's use it. Okay, so make sure you warm up before you come into these workouts and come back ready to work. All right, here we go. So we're going to start with a lat pull on your back. So we, there's lots of ways to work your back and work the big muscles in your back. I'm going to have you lie down with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. See if I can keep them from waking. I'm gonna take this ball in my hands and I'm gonna use my arms, keep them nice and straight and pull it up straight to the beginning here. So I'm thinking about flattening my back here, straight arms. If you bend your arms, we're getting your triceps, which is okay, but we really wanna focus on the lats here, the big muscles in your back. So all the way back. If this causes shoulder pain, just limit the range of motion. So you can go to here and then back. Your lats attach here, back behind your shoulder. So when you're using your shoulder in this straight manner, we're engaging those lats, those big muscles that run down the back of your, that run down your back. Nice and slowly. If you've got a really light, um, medicine ball. You can also use a dumbbell. I'm going to show you how to use both in case you don't have a medicine ball at home. So nice. Keep those arms nice and straight. Those elbows straight. Try to keep those shoulders away from your ears. And we're going slowly. Remember, the more slowly you go, the more muscle fibers have to engage. And we're pressing our backs to the floor. All right, good. So those are lat pulls on your back. Next, we're going to do sit to stand with a shoulder press. So I'm gonna use my bench over here. They're very excited for this video, as you can tell. So I'm gonna take my ball. I'm actually gonna grab a different ball that I have. So you can, I'm just gonna show you different balls that I have. You don't have to use anything specific. Um, like I said, you can use a water jug for this. This is another great use for a water jug. So keeping your hands, the challenge with this is that you can't use your hands to stand up. So we're gonna stand up and press overhead. Sit down, stand up, press. So not only are we engaging your big lower extremity muscles, your quads and your glutes, you're engaging your shoulder muscles by pressing this overhead. You're having to use your core more to stabilize and balance. Keep breathing nice and slowly, both directions. You don't want to plop, no plopping here. We're going slowly, both directions. We're going to do 10 times. Nine. Again, you can use a dumbbell with this, water jug, even a a weight plate would work for most of these as well. Okay, now we're gonna go back down to the floor and we're gonna do a chest fly leg lift. So it's a combination move. Back down in that same position. I'm gonna get my camera back down. You can see my helpful puppy here. This is Baloo. He joined us a week ago already. Okay, so we're gonna lie on your back, same position as as the lat pull, I'm gonna flatten your back to the floor. Now we're gonna straighten one leg. We're gonna do a leg lift and add a chest fly. So your leg lift just stays within this range of motion. So up to your knee, down to the floor, but don't quite touch down. Let's scoot back just a little. So I'm gonna bring this up. So your opposite arm is doing a chest fly towards the center. Now I can't really hang on to this ball, so I'm stopping about there. So if you have a smaller ball, like in my gym, I have some smaller balls that are heavier. Um, the other option you can do, of course, is use a dumbbell 
a little bit easier to hang on to. Just use what you have in your house. You can find, you know, a soup can would work for this as well. So the reason that we're combining this is that we also get that transverse engagement and get your core here in addition to your legs and your arms. So we're getting some, some pecs, some shoulders. Let's see if I can do this without disturbing blue. Okay, chest fly. It worked out that he's in nap time right now because otherwise it might be a little, he might be trying to chew on my weights right now. Keep breathing, really still think about pressing that back to the floor or the mat, whatever you're doing this on. If you need to, you can do these on a bed. If you have a really hard time getting up and down off the floor. And 10, good. So you can use either. You can use your medicine ball or you can use a dumbbell here, whatever you have in your home. Next, we're gonna do a single leg stance. So we're gonna stand up. I'm purposely going from the floor to the standing ones so that you have to work on doing that. It adds a little bit more exercise, doing some floor to stand. Okay, so we're gonna take that ball, whichever ball or weight that you have around, and I'm gonna have you do one arm. So we're gonna stand and press overhead. I'm gonna get this camera a little bit higher. So do this next to a sturdy bar or your kitchen counter sink or your treadmill, something that's sturdy here. So I could grab onto this bar. This isn't sturdy, it's just kind of sitting there. But if you need to. So the keys here are your feet, ankles, all the way if your legs are engaging. Yours is a really good hip stabilizer. So this is really having to stabilize and hold you if you find you're kind of slugging out to the side like that, stop and reposition and start over. So I want you to do this and keep your whole torso in line. So if you're kind of going like this and pushing up, you might have too much weight. And also it might mean that you're a little bit unbalanced. So make sure you're doing it somewhere where you can hang on at least a little bit if you do start to lose your balance so that you're not kind of, you know, doing this all over the place. So try to stay as still as possible. Two, three. So we're adding, we're changing, or we're combining a little balance and core here as well. So we're getting a lot of combination exercises in this set. Six, seven, eight, good, keep breathing. Keep this nice and strong, nine and 10. All right, good, shake it out if you need to. Now we're gonna use that same ball and we're gonna do some chops. We've done chops in the past, we've used our water jugs, we've used dumbbells, we've used lots of things. So we're gonna do that, but um, well, I don't want to chop today. We're going to do it slowly and controlled. So we're going to go up and then we're going to reach down across diagonally. So we're going to controlling these motions. We're not chopping today. So I'm having you shift your weight here from side to side, reaching up and then reaching down and across. So you're shifting into your right side and then your left side. So really controlling, making your core really work here. Nice and slowly. If you need to switch, if you need to press pause and go get a lighter ball or a heavier ball or a lighter dumbbell, whatever you need to do, just press pause and go find what you need to do instead of trying to finish the set, especially if it's too heavy. I'd rather have you do it if it's a little bit too light and just slow it down, especially if you're kind of between. I would opt for just a little bit lighter than a little bit too heavy. Okay, up to the other side, down and across. Remember, we're shifting our weight from side to side as we bring that ball up 
and then down and across our bodies. Breathing. If you have shoulder pain when you go up like that, try going out to the side like this instead. And you can always decrease range of motion. If this is too much range of motion, then just bring it in a little bit. You can keep it in the range of motion that works for you. No need, we never wanna push through pain or do more than we think we should be doing. I promise you that puppy is alive. He was just out playing in the snow. So we've had a good, good romp session and now he's tired. All right, good. Okay, last one. We're gonna do um, ab leans. So go ahead, you can do it on um, a firm surface like this. Or you can do it on a, a, medicine, or a fit ball. You can do that too. I'm just gonna do it here on my bench for today. So I usually, I put my feet out. So my heels are on the ground, my knees are a little bit bent. I'm right up on the edge of this bench. My torso is tall. And I wanna keep my back flat, just like if I was lying on the floor and pressing my back to the floor before I go into a, an abdominal exercise. Here, I'm gonna keep my back flat. I'm just holding this here. Lean back, come up. What I want you to do is lean back and come up, but don't come up all the way. So this is straight up for me. Lean back, come up almost all the way. Now that keeps my abs engaged. If I come all the way up, they get to relax for a second. So you can judge, maybe you do five and then you come all the way up and you give, give yourself a little breath. It can be a little bit difficult to breathe during abdominal and core exercises. So find a way, breathe in, breathe out. And if you find a rhythm, generally, you can continue to do that because you're getting rid of that carbon dioxide buildup and adding back in that oxygen. Breathe all the way through. All right, one more. Okay, all right, great. That was a all the way full body workout with medicine ball. Like I said, if you don't have a medicine ball, grab a dumbbell or um, a water jug. I've got my water jug handy that I use for lots of different things and that would work perfectly for all of these. So use what you have at home, make it work for you. Even if you don't have any resistance, I mean, everybody's got soup cans and things like that in the pantry. So if you don't have any exercise equipment, you can still do most of these workouts. Okay. Thank you everybody. Take care and I'll see you next time.